Hi folks, this is Jason. Hope you're okay today. I just want to talk about secular foundations of morality. I want to show you how secular foundations of morality can be deconstructed and shown to be false. Secular, secular uh, foundations of morality are based on evolution. Now evolution is an amoral system. That is to say, there is neither right nor wrong in the evolutionary system. Nature doesn't tell you what is right and wrong. You have evolutionary psychologists who will present to you uh, studies of apes and say, look, apes have empathy like us, and we can deduce what morality is by studying nature, and therefore we can come up with some kind of understanding of what ethics is using evolutionary psychology. Most philosophers don't take evolutionary psychology serious because it's often self-projection. That is to say, the psychologist, whether they're from the, the political left or political right, will project their own ethics upon the studies of various animals. And so what you find is often uh, political organizations and groups to suit their own particular agenda will take evolutionary psychology and apply it in order to push forward uh, a political agenda that it wants to push forward. In other words, evolutionary psychology in its ethical statements is often very subjective. If you want information about that, go on to uh, Stanford University and type in evolutionary psychology. The point is that I want to get to you is this, that nature in nowhere tells you what's right and wrong. Evolution is an amoral system and that is the foundation. So imagine this is the foundation of secular society. It's a blank piece of paper, there's nothing on it. That is evolution, it is amoral. There are no commands, no statements of how you are to live your life. And so therefore there is no right and wrong. The Christian faith is our foundation, is the Bible. The Bible is a moral system. And that's because Christianity sees itself in the context of the universe as a moral universe where we are accountable to God. That is our foundation. It is not a blank piece of paper. It is a word that tells us what we should do and how we should live. So if your foundation is amoral, you're on a, a bad foundation and will only end in disaster. If your foundation is moral and it is the right morality, then your foundation is on a good, solid, uh, your morality is on a good foundation. Now there are caveats to that and critiques. Uh, secularists will come forward and say, well, what about Old Testament passages where there are murders and um, battles and wars where people are killed? How do you uh, account for that in your so-called moral system? And there are a few points to that. Number one, uh, exegesis. These people never really exegete the passage, so what passages are you talking about? Number two, even if you do exegete the passage, look at the historical context. In the historical context of those Old Testament passages, it's in the context of Israel as a nation. And that doesn't apply today. Number three, how can you judge the, the system of the Bible with an amoral system? Number four, God is in his rights if he wants to judge a nation and to take out a nation. Uh, so those are some of the things about the Old Testament, but at the end of the day, the Old Testament is part of a larger story of the New Testament. And God is teaching us that life is messy, but in the end, he comes out and he sorts it, by die, sorts it out by dying on a cross. Ultimately, God deals with it by giving himself as a sacrifice for the world. Now over to the secularist. We have to put some tough questions to them. So you put your question to the Old Testament, but it's interesting to note that you don't deal with the major issue of Christianity, which is Jesus Christ. As for yourself, 
you have to deal with the thought, thought that you have an amoral system and no way can you justify it. Now you will try to justify it like this. You will say either morality is a social construct, if it is, that means morality is subjective and there is a no objective base for your morality. Number two, you might say we can deduce an objective base because we can look at morality seeing as if it harms something and well-being and therefore if a conduct uh, brings harm to something, somebody or brings well-being that is moral and that is something we can objectively quantify and therefore we can come some, up with some objective, objective base. First of all it depends who does the quantifying it depends who says what is uh, what is harmful and what is not. Somebody might like to be whipped and that brings them pleasure. And one scientist criteria might say it's harmful, another scientist might say it's okay. So who gets to say what criteria is the right criteria for harming and not harming or well-being and non-well-being? These are by no means objective standards. The next way to deal with the argument is to say, well, morality is about conduct, it is about action, and we can uh, analyze those actions. But morality is more than just actions, it's also about intent, and it's also about value. How do we give a rationale for what is valuable and what is not valuable? The secularists say, well, you are arguing that morality is some kind of substance but in reality morality is part of who we are and who we are is about whether we have value or not and what situations are valuable and what situations are not valuable these are not just about actions but they are about states and in society uh, sorry in nature nature does not tell you what is the state i.e. what is value and what is not valuable. So these are some of the big philosophical problems with secularism and the modern foundations of morality. The foundation is based on evolution which is simply an amoral system and so the, the secularist cannot get from the ought, from the is to the ought. There is no ought because there is no is. And if there is no is, then there is no ought. And that is the problem. Because Christianity has an is. It is the word of God and it has an ought, i.e. it explains the conduct done to be done. That conduct and that is is Jesus Christ. He is the is. He comes and lives the life of agape love. And then he is the ought we are to copy his model. That is a better foundation for ethics in this modern world than an amoral system that is neither moral or immoral, but is just amoral. Thank you for listening and take care.